antennas on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm a big fan of uh, Raspberry Pis. Um, so let's go back to the Raspberry Pi 2 or 3 is the B plus model, I believe. Um, so you can see this component right here. That is their antenna. So they have a little chip antenna and keep out on there. 2.4 gigahertz antenna. Um, no big deal. Um, then you go to the Raspberry Pi 0W, more recent model, there's no chip antenna. They just have this little triangular cutout here with a few matching components, and still just a 2.4 gigahertz antenna. So in this video, I'm going to do an analysis on it, how they designed it, and how it works. All right, so let's look at this uh, guy real quick. So we have the antenna, this is the transmission line. Uh, looks like there's a series matching component right here. This is most likely a bandpass filter. Um, then there's another transmission line that goes uh, to the Wi-Fi Bluetooth chipset and a little bit of RF matching again here as well. So what we want to do and care about the antenna is I'm going to take this component off, get rid of this guy, and I'm going to put a cable in that comes right up through here so I can measure uh, the impedance and antenna efficiency looking from this point right here. Okay, so I removed that uh, component and filter, and then I put a little uh, coaxial cable in there so I connect it to a VNA and measure uh, VSWR efficiency and gain, and I can see how the antenna is doing. So let's take a look. So here's the VSWR plotted from 2 gigahertz to 3 gigahertz, and I added red lines for where Wi Fi is about 2.4 to 2.48 gigahertz. And so on this antenna, I cabled up, uh, pretty well tuned. Um, you know, it looks like it's tuned slightly to the low end, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, pretty decent bandwidth. Um, worst case, VSWR is about three, so maybe one dB of mismatch loss, but overall decently tuned. Uh, measure the efficiency. Um, so the peak efficiency is a little bit higher than minus two dB, so you know, 70% somewhere in there, uh, falls off to a little bit under minus three dB, but on average, it's a decent antenna. Um, let's see, the gain, uh, looks like the directivity is on the order of about five dB. So the gain is, you know, efficiency plus directivity. So you see peak gain about three dB, um, which isn't really good or bad, just a number I thought I'd share. And finally, the Smith chart, uh, if you want to know what a Smith chart is, Google it, but this is basically the phase of the antenna. In this case, I'm measuring the phase at that component I removed that's near the filter. Uh, but you can see uh, this is what the phase looks like. Okay, let's explain this Raspberry Pi antenna. All right, so when you make an antenna, you always want to start with some fundamental mode, which is almost always a dipole antenna. So this is a perfect antenna to start with, dipole antenna, fundamental building block of consumer electronics. By this battery symbol, plus minus, I basically mean the radio is somewhere on here, grounded to one side, and then the feed or RF plus pin of the radio goes to the other side. So we want to figure out how we can make this fit on a Raspberry Pi, which is essentially, as far as RF concerned, mostly ground with a keep out, where they're letting us do whatever we want uh, for an antenna in this small section. So how do we make an antenna in this case? Um, Let's start with the Vivaldi antenna. So if we make the antenna wider, it's actually better for antenna, that's good. Um, so let's make our antenna wider and then let's short it out. So we're putting a short pretty near the feed, not too close, but as close as it'll give us space. So what that means is we really just have an antenna with uh, inductance in parallel that's somewhat shorting it out at RF, but not completely. So if we do that, kind of finagle that, think about it like, okay, we have this keep out. If you zoom in on the Raspberry Pi Zero antenna, it's kind of like a triangle. And we basically have a dipole that's heavily uh, shorted on one side. So basically, uh, you know, looks a lot like an inductor. So let me pull up the Smith chart. So I removed the impedance matching components. So there's some two series Cs. I replace those with zero ohm and I get rid of the shunt inductor. And what I see is the Smith chart looks like this. Um, that's almost pure inductance. Um, so from there, I say, okay, what if I just match that? I could use a series uh, C, which would bring it down to the point uh, to the left, and then a shunt C to pull it into the center. 
So if I use about one picofarad in series and 2.8 picofarad shunt, then I basically get a decently matched uh, circuit. So really all they're doing is uh, taking a d dipole antenna that's heavily shorted with inductance using as much keep out as they're allowed and then matching it. So pretty straightforward. So finally, um, I measured their matching components. They have two series ones, two, a two picofarad and a 1.2 picofarad. Um, so the reason they did that is I think they needed something like 0 0.75 picofarads in series. And uh, you can't find that easily. Um, they're typically 0.7 or 0.8. And then the tolerance is plus or minus 0.1. So you use two of these uh, in series to get a more exact value. Helps a little bit with tolerance as well. Uh, but it's still not quite uh, good enough with the tolerance. Which is why the antenna was shifted, uh, as I showed earlier. And then their shunt cap was 2.6 picofarads. So that's their antenna schematic. That's how they did it. No magic. Um, it's a good antenna. So nice job. Uh, but that's what happened to uh, the chip antenna that was on the previous models.